We're going to be speaking to the founder of West Africa's first air ambulance service, and that's Dr. Ole Brown. started almost 10 years ago now wow. so I've been in, I feel like a business old timer and I grew up in England actually and I was born in England and um, a bit of the way through medical school my sister my younger sister got really ill um, when she was on holiday here in Nigeria and um, before we could get an air ambulance she died um, and she died at 12 years old and it made me start thinking about I guess my profession and medicine in a new way um, it made me start wondering if there was anything else I could do apart from like just staying in England and working for the NHS um, that could really make an impact in Africa. So I'd never really lived here before. Um, so I came on what I thought was going to be like just a fact-finding feasibility type study trip, but then I just never went back. So that's really the story of how the company started. Um, and it started with the aim of tackling what I believe is one of the biggest health problems in the world, which is logistics. Um, I think lots of people die not because the help they need is not available anywhere, but it's just they were unable to get to the right medical facility within the right time frame. And I think air ambulances are very good at solving that problem. And, and what operationally then do you do? And do you cover all of West Africa or just Nigeria? Yes. So we cover all of Western Central Africa and we're the leading air ambulance company in the region. Um, so we cover all the way up to Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, and all the way down to Gabon and Central African Republic. So not only is it, you know, a business which makes sense because there is a need, but you're saving lives as well. Absolutely. So what's next for Flying Doctors? Um, we want to continue expanding. Um, so I think uh, there was an interesting McKinsey report, I think it came out last year, it was called Lions on the Move 2.0. And um, I think one of the things that they mentioned was most successful um, businesses have spread across Africa got a very strong hold on their home country first. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, basically make sure that we have as much business as possible here before we venture um, into other regions of Africa. But definitely we're, we're looking at expansion. Did you have any challenges in terms of funding your business when you started 10 years ago? I think funding is an issue across Africa. So um, we actually have 15% of the world's population but we, and we contribute 3% um, to the world's GDP, but we only have 0.1% of investor portfolios. So from Johannesburg to Cairo, funding is always going to be a problem for our businesses. And I think that the better that we advocate and tell our stories, the more that um, we can attract global funding. Because I, I, every time I listen to this ratio, 15% of the world's population, we are contributing 3% um, to global GDP and we're only receiving 0.1% of global investor portfolios. It's not good enough for us as a continent, and that's something that really needs to change. And what do you think in the domestic markets are the stumbling blocks in terms of accessing that finance? Um, in terms of Nigeria specifically, again, I think I can talk about the continent because I think that a lot of the things that prevent Nigerian businesses from accessing funding are the same things that um, prevent businesses in South Africa from um, accessing funding. Although South Africa is a completely different world from the rest of Africa, I think, because at least South African businesses do have um, the markets are more liquid. Mm -hmm. So the value of the Nigerian stock exchange is about $30 billion and half of that is one person. Mm -hmm. The value of the stock, the last time I checked the value of the South African Stock Exchange, it was about 900 billion. So it's not even double or triple or even 10 times. It's much, much larger and there's much more liquidity in that market. But I think that still, when investors in San Francisco or New York or London think of Africa, they don't think of South Africa as separate or Kenya as separate or Morocco as separate. They think about AIDS, they think about war, they think about poverty and they think it's not a good place to invest. And it's up to us to be able to um, sort of try and change that narrative so that we can allow our companies to grow and become globally competitive. But I imagine the kind of growth figures that we've seen coming out of our countries are beginning to sway that narrative. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So um, African companies actually perform, outperform their global peers in terms of growth. And this is something that I tell every investor that I speak to, um, to try and change that narrative and try and attract 
more funding across the continent to our businesses because um, it's this issue I think of uh, creating global brands and I think almost every other continent um, in the world has been able to have really huge global brands so in America of course we all know the big American brands we know the big European brands and even in Asia I mean Samsung is out of um, South Korea um, Kia, Hyundai, they've all got these like huge global brands but for Africa, even South Africa, I don't think we're on that level when it comes to having products and services that we can sell to the world, we're just about getting there and I think the only thing that can help us grow our businesses to that level is if we're able to attract more funding. And finally for you, are you still practicing medicine or are you immersed in running the business itself? I'm more immersed in running the business okay. now, so I do do a bit of medicine but um, my main focus is obviously growing the business, um, operationally running the business and making sure that we can continue to grow and expand. And how has being part of Lionesses of Africa helped you or supported you in that? Lionesses of Africa is a really, really great initiative. So in Nigeria, there are more women engaged in entrepreneurial activity in Nigeria than almost any country in the world uh, as a percentage of the population. Um, but the businesses don't grow and those stories are not told. And I think Lionesses of Africa provides a wonderful platform um, for women to begin to tell these stories. And also, um, one thing that is peculiar to Africa more than the rest of the world is the role of women in society is still very much in transition. So I think in many parts of Europe or um, America, um, I think the concept of uh, being a working woman and um, female-owned businesses and female enterprises more accepted than it is um, in Africa. And I think that um, the Lionesses of Africa really helps to give women a voice and um, starts to bring about more of that acceptability which we need so much here.